everyone, it's Caroline here from Aussie Cards and Crafts. Yesterday I put up a Facebook Live um, just showing some Christmas ideas for our competition in Christmas in July. And a lot of you have actually put comments up and messaged me regarding the concertina card that was there. Um, this is the expanding concertina card. And as you can see, this is one that I actually did last year. It has a lot of depth in it. Um, it's a lovely card and it's quite easy to make. So I'll just show you. I don't know how much I'll get in, in one hit on my camera here, but you can see that it's got apertures through it and it really is quite a spectacular card. It can be displayed like so or it could be displayed just as if people don't have very much room it can just be displayed like, like that. It is, as I said, very easy to make and because people have asked me I thought well let's give it a go. Let's see how we go doing a tutorial on it. This particular one that I'm going to make is not going to be a Christmas card. I actually have a very special young man who has a 16th birthday coming up in a couple of weeks time and uh, I needed to make something special for him. So I'm going to make this a birthday card. I won't be finishing the decorations because unfortunately I'm in uh, quarantine at the moment and I need to get some photographs done for the to finish the card off and obviously being in quarantine I can't do that so let's get started I'll pop this up here so that I can see it um, and I can refer to it as I need to firstly for the sizings of the paper uh, let me get you in in shot there you're going to need two pieces of your card um, and they are going to be 12 inches by 5 and 3 quarter inches. Okay, so two of those. And along the 12 inch side, you need to score at 5 and 3 quarters and 11 and a half. Okay, so 5 and 3 quarters and 11 and a half. The other piece you do exactly the same. Okay, so that one's already been done. Um, the next piece that you need is going to be um, two pieces of, sorry, one piece of six and a quarter by once again five and three quarters. And along there, you're going to score that one at the half inch. Okay, so you score that down at half inch. The final piece is going to be five and three quarters, okay, by five and three quarters. For your mats for those, you are going to need, and I'm doing silver on that because I think that will actually look quite spectacular. Um, so for your mats, and I'm going to do one for the front as well, so you'll need one, two, three, and if you want to do one for the back as well. So I'm actually doing four here. Um, so your mats, you will need four pieces or three pieces of five and a half by five and a half. And depending on where you want to put those, uh, you'll need either four or three of those. The layers, I'm using this paper for the layers. And once again, they're coming in, uh, they come down in quarter inch um, uh, intervals, so that one is going to be five and three. Uh, sorry, five and a quarter by five and a quarter. And once again, at the moment, I've got four of those. I'm not sure whether I'll need all four. Um, the next piece that you need is. Let me just have a little look at my cheat sheet here. Two of those, one of those, and one of those. I seem to have a, a spare piece. Never mind. Um, for the interlocking pieces, which are these pieces here, okay, so that's the inserts, you are going to need two pieces that measure ten and a quarter by three and one quarter. Okay, so ten and a quarter by three and one quarter, and you need two of those. Now along the ten and a quarter inch side, you are going to score at three and a quarter, just there, six and a half, and nine and three quarters. 
okay and you do that on both pieces the other piece that you're going to need is going to be a piece that is three and a quarter once again by six and a half and you're going to score that one down the three and a quarter inch mark so that is your scoring done and that's the base of the card done now for your decoration you are going to need eight pieces and i'm going to use the mirror card once again for this you're going to need eight pieces of three inch by three inch and for your mat layers you are going to need two and uh, three quarters by two and three quarters because I'm actually going to be putting um, photographs on these ones uh, I'm not I'm not doing mats for them because the photograph will go straight on there these two particular ones I'm actually going to put right in the center um, so I'm going to put this one here and here and I'm going to put the number 16 on them because it's his 16th birthday okay so let me show you how it goes together right before we do anything we also need to cut some frames now you'll see that I have cut some frames here already um, and before I unstuck the uh, I'm sure you all know how to to cut frames but the aperture which is obviously the hole that goes through here is the size of the die that is in the center there and I've stuck these together and I've get, got the next one out so that I can actually make the last frame and show you how to make that so let me just grab my um, my plates I'm using a electric die cutting machine but this it doesn't have to be electric um i think i said on my last uh, my last one i've i've used a manual machine right up until very 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 recently and it's done me very very well i just am very short on space on my, in my craft room so it actually does help to uh, not to have to keep pulling things out and putting them away again i had this on the desk the whole time and I'll just reverse it, pull it back the other way so I don't have to stretch over and hurt my shoulder. So I've done three of them, as you can see, and you'll see where I put those in a moment. Okay. Don't ever throw all your scraps away. Keep them. I'm sure you'll, you'll find something for them. Same with that. Right. Now, so there's my four frames that I need. Now what I need to do is I need to actually die cut the apertures in the base of the cards. So for that, we need the smaller one of the two dies. I don't need that large, large one again. That can go back into its packet so it doesn't get lost. So that can go in there don't have any there's just stitch dies uh stitch square nested dies i don't have a, a name for these ones um i bought them a long long time ago before i even started doing tutorials so i can't really tell you what they're going to be so we take our two big pieces out and what we need to do is we need to I'll get rid of this for the time being. Burnish the folds, okay? So you're going to make a mountain fold and a valley fold. And burnish that fold really well. And do that on both, okay? What you then need to do, and this is going to actually cut through um, well, we hope it's going to cut through. It's fairly thick card, this, but we need it to at least make an indentation on both of these pieces, okay? Because this is double, okay? So you remember that's like so. Now, what I do like to do is I like to check my measurements because we do need it to be in the same spot. So that is. Um, 
just over three quarters of an inch. Oh, way off there. So let me. I'm usually pretty good with distances, but I was miles away then. So let's just try again. Okay, so what have we got there? And you see I use washi tape. I'm the, the queen of washi tape. I love it for when I'm doing my die cutting. Just under two, just under two, just under two, just under two. Okay, I'm happy with that. So I'll pop that one through my machine. Let's see how we've gone. Okay, you can see it hasn't actually cut that one out, but it should have cut the top one out. So, there's the top one. And it's, as you can see, it's almost, oh, yeah, it has almost cut that bottom one out. So, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a knife, and very, very gently, just finish it off. Okay, it really and truly does not need much. There we go. And there's our first aperture cut. And then we do the same on the next piece. How do we go? Oh, maybe. So, the first one off. Just in that same spot again. Just needs just a little bit of help. And there we go. So there we go. There we have it. We have now have our apertures. So let me get my, my cheat card up again because I haven't made this card for so, so long. So getting all our pieces back together again. We have this piece that is going to be our front piece. Okay. And it's got the hinge just there. So what we're going to do is we are going to have this piece here, let's get that out of the way, and that is going to go in there on that hinge right up to there. It then will fold over and you will have another hinge piece here. Um, and what you do, I'm just, I'm cheating here, what you do here is you pop this one right up against that one, okay? Other way up, there we go. And then that will fold over. You have this piece here, and then the final one, you actually have that on the outside. And the reason you have that on the outside is because you're going to put another piece of card over the top of that and that's going to hide that hinge. So when you open it up, you can see you've got your apertures in there. So what we've got to do now is just glue it together and then we've got the basis of our card. So I will speed up while I'm doing this. There we go so there is the basis of our card okay 
So the next piece, I'm going to pop that up there. The next piece is the pieces that are inside. I'll just pop my die, my die away. Otherwise I'll go to use it next time and it won't be there. So for the next piece we've got our, I think I, did I go through the, um, the die, the, um, not sure whether I actually went through this with you, but the scoring on these, remembering that this is ten and a quarter, the scoring is at three and a quarter, six and a half, and nine and three quarters and that's on the two long pieces on the smaller piece it is at three and a quarter okay i wasn't sure whether i've done that with you before so this piece here let me bring this one through this is going to be stuck just here then we're going to have a, a valley fold there, a mountain fold there, and then another valley fold here. What we then do is we're going to stick that piece whoops, upside down, that there. Then we're going to have another mountain fold, a valley fold, and then the final part will come in here. Okay, so let me show you how that's done. So we will have some glue on this bit. It is very much easier to decorate this um, prior to putting it together. Um, the, the, insert, the insert part anyway. Um, and the reason I say that is it, it just comes off a lot smoother. So this one, because you're going to have this one that is going this way, because that's going to actually go on the back of our card, just here. If you put that on that way, you will find that you will not see that hinge. There we go. Let that grab for a moment. As you can see, concertinas beautifully. Okay, before I do anything else, I'm going to put my frames on. Now, we, you saw me cutting that last frame. The frames are going to go around the apertures on here so they will go just like so and give it some pop there we go so there is the basis of our card done and as you can see it's coming together quite quickly and quite easily so let's go back to this one here now. As I said to you, I'm actually going to um, put photographs on the majority of these. I hope that's not shiny, shining you too much. But on the, the centre ones, I'm going to put um, 16. I've got my, my cutouts just here. Um, so I'm going to put one and a six. And then I'm going to have some pictures on the other six. Um, uh, faces there unfortunately I can't do that at the moment so I'm just going to glue these down and it is much easier I'm going to put the I'm going to glue all of the uh, mirror card on I just can't put the photographs on until I get them printed it's a real nuisance being in uh, quarantine I don't mind the solitude and I don't mind being able to do lots of crafting but when you want to get out and do something and get something you have to rely on uh, other people to do it so 
and unfortunately getting the photos done is not something I can rely on anyone else to do. Okay. There we go. So they're all stuck down, like so, and they're all concertina. And you can imagine once we've uh, got some lovely pictures of uh, the young lad with his race car on there, I think it's going to look really good. Okay, what you do next, bring our, our main card over. And what we need to do is we need to stick this piece, okay, this, this piece here, in the center of that there. Okay, now one of the best ways that I find is to close part of it over and make sure that you've got it centered there. So let me put some glue on this piece. And the reason that um, I have put all the frames on beforehand is because the frames will not go on once you've done this part. So they've got to go on before you put your um, centre um, center pieces on there. So let's pop it down there and you get a nice even frame all the way around it. Using glue obviously you do have a little bit of wiggle room. And then you glue the back part. So you need enough glue on there, but you don't want it spurting out everywhere. And then you close the card over. Like so. Just give it a little bit of time. Oops. That'd be covered anyway. Just give it a little bit of time to grab. And there you have your card. Okay, just make sure it's straight on this end because you just closed that one. So, yep, that's straight. And that's straight. So there you go. And that's the basis of how you do it. Um, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, oh, I'll tell you what I didn't do. I'm going to take that off. I was far too keen, wasn't I? I didn't put my mats and layers on. Let me just take this off. See? So keen to get my, uh, my tutorial up to help people who have been asking that uh, I've left all my mats and layers off. So let's let's put the mats and layers on. So. Okay, that was a bit silly, wasn't it? So, never mind. We'll get back to where we were. So what we need to do is we need to put this in the middle of that there. Okay, so we just grab our glue again. Oh, it's a bit yucky, doesn't it? Never mind. So we'll pop the glue on, on top of the glue. See, we all make mistakes. In fact, a lot of people say there's no mistakes in crafting. You just cover it up or you do something else and you change your plan. Um, it's somebody's own individual um, thoughts and interpretations. So if you can get that as 
centered as you can and once again I'm just going to use the frame to see if I can get that then on the top of this one we'll put some more glue again and then fold like we did last time by mistake we and fold it over. Luckily I didn't let it stick too much last time otherwise I wouldn't have been able to get it off. So there we go. Now if I open it up and just make sure it's square. You're happy with how it's sitting. Being glue you have got some wiggle room which is always good. Hmm, it's got glue on it. Never mind, that will have a, a picture over it anyway, so I'm not overly worried. Um, I'm sure that that will rub off, yes. Do get glue on Miracard, just use an eraser, it's, uh, it's fine. Okay, and there we have the bases of the cart. Okay. It, it is easier to actually decorate these these parts before you do this but obviously I can't do that as I said before um, but I'm going to put the uh, the 16 in here so they'll have the, the one there and the, the six here and I'll have photographs and I'll, I'll cut the photographs down what I will do is I will actually put the finished product on the Facebook site because um, I can't finish this for a couple of weeks unfortunately but I do people have been asking for this style with the uh, the competition that we've got running with Christmas in July at the moment so I thought it was a, a good opportunity to actually revisit this card and do it the other thing you can do um, and I probably will do uh, with different de decorations is I will put some things around the outside if I bring this one back in you'll see that I've, I've done snowflakes and stars and don't be scared to, to go off the page with your decorations as well so if we look at this you'll see that that one is not a full snowflake and uh, that one is not a full snowflake and then there's there's other things that are not full stars it makes it look more real so yeah that is my uh, expanding Christmas card um, I I hope you uh, I hope you get some some benefit out of it uh, as I said I will put this one up once I have finished it um, don't forget to have a look uh, on our Facebook site our Facebook is Aussie Cards and Crafts um, if you're not a member please just send us a, a, a request uh, we'd love to see some of the work that you do uh, if you are a member, love to see what you do with this tutorial. Love to see some of your makes going up there. We're also on Instagram as well, so please follow us there, which once again is Aussie Cards and Crafts. Thank you for listening. Please give us a thumbs up if you uh, enjoyed it. And uh, I will see you very, very, very soon with yet another um, make. And I think it's going to be the candle one next time. I think that's what I'm going to do because somebody else has asked for that one. So thanks for joining me tonight and uh, good luck with your card. Please don't hesitate to, um, as I said, become a member of our Facebook page. But if you have any difficulties, just message me, uh, inbo inbox me from that page and I can uh, hopefully assist you from there. Thanks. Bye.